Hello everybody, I am Savic and I'm here with Doc. This is Kingwin Pro League, week 8, day 2. We have seen two, two matches so far. First one was uh, was Sho against uh, Really play against Xixo, yes. So, yeah. And Sho took was... that series 3-0 uh, oh, actually. Yeah, this is like 10 minute series or 15 minutes. It was ridiculously fast. And uh, after that we saw Kaldi versus Hyped. And yes. that was a very good series. It was uh, ended up 3-2 for Kaldi. You know, quite a nail biter there. It could have went uh, either way around. Both players playing extremely solid. And uh, and it was a pleasure to watch. And <laughs> yeah, at least my... my uh, I, I think so. A really great series. And I'm sure the next one is going to be great as well. We have Life Coach going up against Amaz. What do you think of that? I, I like it. I've actually never seen them play against each other, and uh, it might take a while, you know, because Life Coach obviously going to rope every turn, but that's that's okay. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm really excited about this one. I like both their play styles. Life Coach makes a lot of decisions that I wouldn't normally make. Like, for a lot of his plays, I like, I don't know, I watch him, and I'm just like, yeah, like, you could do that, but that's kind of weird. And he, like, ends up doing it, and, like, it ends up being right, like, you know, decent amount of the time, so... It's, uh, it's interesting, and Amaz is just a pretty solid player over around. I mean, all around, so. Yeah, life coach, absolutely on fire early early on this year. He was on top of the Gosu game and rankings. He was just crushing and winning winning multiple tournaments in a row. He kind of does, I, I agree with you, he kind of has his own like play style. He, he does some, some decisions different than other players would do. I also find myself kind of like, oh, I would have done that. But usually, like, almost always, it's like the more I think about it, I'm like, yeah. It's pretty good. I'm like, I'm, yeah. like he, he has quite a few times done that. I've been really, like, really impressed with some of the plays that he makes. Exactly. It's, it can't be going to be out of the box. And there is a lot of stuff going on in his head. For those who have like watched his stream, know that he's like, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And the rope starts burning. Like, there's a lot of stuff to say every, every single time. <laughs> there's a lot going on in there. And I uh, really like, uh, carefully de deliberates his decisions. Like, um, like uh, make sure that there won't be anything missed. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see him play. Life coach is currently four and one in the league, and he has by far the highest tiebreaker. He's only given up four games this entire like That's time. Insane. Yeah, he is behind a match, so I think he'll be playing twice today. Oh yeah, he is. Mm -hmm. He's he was next match. Uh, well, the one after that will be against. Uh, why do I not have it up here? Okay. Uh, he will be playing against Orange. Yep. Yes, that will be the last match of the day. But now um, we should focus on uh, this one at hand. So Amas right now in Texas, I believe, at the Arkham at House. Arkham House is uh, visiting there. I, I don't think he like is moving in there, but he's visiting there, and I'm sure that he has prepared together with his Arkham teammates for this this one. And uh, the decklist that is coming up are probably mostly going to be something that they prepared together. Yeah, Amaz, is, uh, Amaz won the little WCA qualifier thing, so he's going to, uh, I guess, California later on. So that's really good. He beat me, I think, last week in KPL as well. Or no, he beat me in something else. I don't know. But he's he's been doing pretty well lately, especially since he went to the Archon Gaming House, so I wouldn't be surprised if he brought really good decks. Uh, Life Coach right now has Druid, Paladin, Warlock, Amaz, Druid, Hunter, and Warrior. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. Only the Druid is revealing here. Life Coach with the Paladin. He really likes to play Paladin. Like, personally, I've kind of drifted away from the Paladin lately. I don't feel like it might not be the greatest thing ever to play in this meta. But Life Coach... Life Coach likes to stick with it. I mean, he's been playing Paladin for a long time. Like, when he was when he was on his hot streak in, like, January, February, he was playing a Paladin, I believe, in pretty much every every tournament. More like a... It's, a, it's like a late game heavy paladin usually that I, from what i've seen not not so much mid rangey yeah paladin actually used to have the highest win rate in tournaments by a very large margin which is surprising because most people thought of it as like kind of a bad class and it's just pretty consistent if you play the, the mid-range version you have aldors you can trade up your units really well run one equality if things go bad it's a it's a good deck so i'm yeah, excited I, to I, see that yeah i think it was uh, like for a little while it was kind of like uh 
out of favor, mostly because of rogues, because it's, it's pretty bad against that, and also bad against freeze mage. And um, yeah, but but life coach, I wanted to add about like his decks in general. Like these are the decks that he, he's been playing for a long time. Like, all all three of these, Druid, Paladin, and Warlock, and he he tends to run run really really greedy decks. Yeah, like we, he's one of those players who would play, play even play nourish in his. Uh, Druid, even if it's not like a ramp druid, there's no ancient of wars or anything, but there might still be a nurse in there. It's kind and of the strange. warlock, knowing his style, even though everybody, almost everyone has switched to zoo right now because of the imp, imp gang lord, imp gang master, imp gang boss. Yes, got it right on that. <laughs> uh, imp gang boss. So, I was, um, about that, I would, I would still think that, uh, knowing that it's life coach, I would put him on a handlock. Yeah, for, for sure. Uh, looks like life coach, we have the first match, uh, Choices. Mm -hmm. Looks like Life Coach went with Warlock and Amaz went with Hunter first. I uh, I actually think that Warlock doesn't do too bad against Hunter if it's Handlock. I would put Handlock more favored against Hunter than Zoo. Yeah, and uh, Life Coach tends to run double heal bot list. So uh, if Amaz is bringing a face Hunter, maybe with the right draws, with Molden Giants, heal bots, I think he might be able to pull it off. Although, my, my personal opinion about, about it is that Hunter is still favored. Now, I, I haven't been able to really like figure out Warlock this list that could be favorite against Hunter, but this is one of those those matchups that tend to like kind of divide opinions. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I would say it's like 50-50. It's hard to hard to pin, you know, who's yep. super favored. Uh, Mas might be playing mid range. Yeah, so. it might be mid range. I, I saw him playing mid range in the past few tournaments, so I'm actually not too sure, but mm -hmm. I definitely see mid range here. I think it, I think it fits his style more now that I think more about it. I was uh, my first thing instinct was that it's it's probably face under because most people are playing face under, but knowing Amas's style, it, it might be mid range. Yeah. So so does that improve the warlock odds then? Like which is better for warlock handlock? Would you, would you like to play handlock against mid range or face? I don't know, actually. That's a hard question. I I think I would rather play a handlock against mid range. I, I think so too. I think there's like more time to do your thing yeah. and just get those giants going. Because against mid range, sometimes you might even be able to drop like a mountain giant. Which maybe if I knew. Much. Maybe if I knew it was mid range. Yeah, that because, that, actually, that helps a lot. Yeah, the mulligan is really really important for handlock. It's. Really important. So, uh, life cuts dropping on the Mali guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I uh, and can't so it begins. <laughs> yeah, but it's good to like go through all the options. All okay. right, so Houndmaster there, and I believe we also like one of the cards that Amas threw away was a high main. Yeah, so, so uh, we can tell it's mid range. Mid range. Greetings going on. Turn one. Turn one, <laughs> turn one rope. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. Uh -oh. Oh, oh. oh, what a letdown! I was so sure. So oh, should be scientist. Yep. Why is, he, why is life coach playing so fast? I don't know. He needs to slow down. He might make a mistake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, here, um, <laughs> Sun Fury. I, 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 I kind of like Sun Fury, but I can also understand if he wants to go for the big Drake. You don't, you don't like Owl? No, no, I think he wanted for the high man. I mean, but probably just like you have sweepers for high man. You have shadow flame and hellfire. Yeah, okay. What Maybe. if he has bow? You get super punished by uh. By sun fury. Maybe, and if he only plays one defender, just keeping the sun fury, like one defender of Argus. Cause yeah. I'm guessing that there's two sun furies in there. Everybody plays two sun furies. But if there's only one defender, it means that you only have to total of to three taunt givers. Playing the sun fury here might. Not be that great. See, so now, now you can understand why he ropes. Look, there's so many options. There's like there's three. a lot of options. <laughs> there's, like three. There's, there's, there's three plays here. There's the owl, there's the sun fury, and there's the tap. Well, there's four plays. You can owl coin tap or owl coin coil. It's solid. <laughs> it's Finally, solid. your own owl. The cards. <laughs> you need a cycle. It's so important. It's boring. Uh, I mean, what am I saying? It's not boring. Okay. There's the tap. Tapping. All right. Oh. I like it. Yes. I think it's good. It's fair, yeah. Sweet. I mean, he's up against the mid range, so he doesn't have to take it that fast. Against the uh, uh, face hunter, I, I would lean towards playing a two drop there, whether it be the owl or well, most likely the owl against. against I agree. Face hunter. Uh, but he he, he, like he took the risk that he like you know it was mid range. I'm sure he watched some of Mods's vods or something, and yeah. so, you know last two tournaments, oh mid range, he won those tournaments. Probably gonna play mid range again. Um, yeah. I I think that 
having the shredders are really really important for the hunter i think they're like you know much better than like maybe a belcher or something like that just so much damage so yeah. yeah it's it's pretty sweet especially like against them like this warlock is uh and warlock handlock is very strong on the aoe and shredder is kind of tricky to, to clear because it, it comes back with uh in sometimes in more powerful form in in uh in millhouse mana stone but usually like a three two or two three yeah exactly and here uh pretty straight turn. i don't i don't think on this turn there was like that much else to do i think that was kind of an obvious play he's curving out pretty well um would you trade in the mad scientist to get a like a yeah okay. sure yeah i agree and then houndmaster i like it yeah not bad at all Might as well get let's value. Give away some, yeah that's that's quite a bit of owl value so that's the problem with it so because of the potential for iron big owl i think that shredder might have been okay too that because is, now it's, it's pretty true. obvious owl yeah but also like he knows that if the owl is used on that then it won't be available for the high main anymore well, do you do you play the sun fury that way um you can proc the freezing trap with mm -hmm. the sun fury possibly you just owl so, sun fury yeah. go hard okay i would uh i would also like consider taunting up the owl no is there any point in you would taunt you would taunt up the owl i think right i, I think you do like yeah. the, it's either like the spider is trading into it or the hound master attacking into it, putting it into model call range yeah i don't think you can like take the risk of not taunting it <laughs> I'm sure there's some variation where he gets punished for not. Yeah. Oh, oh. maybe maybe not. Maybe though. there yeah. isn't. Maybe he thought about it enough. Yeah, maybe there's like an like an unleash, maybe. Yeah. There's like an unleash that makes it really easy to like get rid of it. But uh it does like it, even without the taunt, I guess unleash because you can just first plow through the drake and Oof. then trade that one. That's rough. That was uh that was actually a really important turn. I think yeah, if he went with the shredder he'd be in a much better position right now. Yeah, definitely. It's crazy how much just like that one play changed the course of the game. But on the, the, also, um, what might have like leaned Damas towards playing the Houndmaster there was the fact that uh, a lot of players have got one owl in handlock list. So, so it's possible that he was putting life coach on just one owl, and he was just like taking his chances that the owl is not there. That is true. But the, that that turn from life coach, I feel like he took the lead there like by a lot. I, I it was agree. really powerful. Would you um do you wow. trade in the owl? Or like would you would you freezing trap the owl or would you freezing trap the um Sun Fury? I think you bounce the owl to have access to it for the high main later. I, I agree. I would uh That's like the Sun the Defender looks so good here. Like you just bounce the owl, then you play the Defender, take out both parts of the Belcher. I think that puts him in like very strong about position. I think so as well. You you float a mana, but do you really care? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If if he didn't have like another defender, and he valued the taunt giver very highly, I think that would would be a thing. But I don't feel like he needs the another sun fury. I feel like he needs the, yeah, oh, the owl. snake! Oh my goodness! Oh, wow, man, that's uh, the trap. oh my gosh! Wow, oh, I did not man. expect that. Amaz with the mind games, jeez. Yeah, and there's no hellfire or anything. Oh, that is so good. And the That's... thing is, like, he's trying to play around high main for next turn, and now he just doesn't have enough time because he's being roped and, like, another factor came into play. Wow. Oh, man. No, that was a turn around. I was also like, we didn't see what the trap was, so I was so sure that it, it would be a freezing trap. And if it was a freezing trap, life coach would have had a commanding lead, but... That's not the case right now. So he has a... Oh my goodness. He has... Wow, you even a this much. Ooh. I think you do it, yeah. You trade a snake for the 5-5. Five, yeah. five. You trade another snake for the Sun Fury. You take out the... Man. The defender with the Houndmaster. So just you have a, a, a really strong board here. The thing is, Life Coach does have two Moltens in hand, so if Amaz gets like a little like reckless, or not even reckless, just, you know, puts him on not having the high mains, and it could go Life Coach's way, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's amazing how, how big of a difference one trap can make. <laughs> it would be a completely different game if that was the, a freezing trap. That was a fast turn. I actually really like this Lotheb here, because if you play Belcher, you're not taking the damage to the face. If you play the Lotheb, then like, 
Amaz is inclined to go face here, and then you can maybe get up Molten's out next turn, something like that. Plus, you need the taunt for later. So I actually like the Lothab a lot. I like it a lot as well because it it contests the high man, and uh, like you don't care about taking the da face, damage to face. And Hunter, and one more thing is that Hunter really struggles at dealing one damage. So like the Houndmaster, it's not it would be up. easy to deal that one extra damage to extend the trade with the uh, Houndmaster. This is a hard attack. I think maybe... Uh, I don't know. You had to attack with the high man there. Do you shoot and just pass? Okay, web spinner and pass. I like it. So he's playing yeah. around them. Oh, whoa. Oh, 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 oh man. If he draws into oh. a taunt... No, no, that's not a taunt. Yeah. But if it was, if it was, he, he, Armas would have been punished a little bit by that. Because there actually would have been not just one, but... Maybe if it was Sun Fury. There would have been not just one, but two Moldens with taunts coming up. Which you... would have been a really difficult board state. Do you tap? I think you have to. I, I don't know, like, how do you how do you win if you don't tap? Is there, like, a, some kind of Belcher play? I, uh, I, I don't know. I think you could, like, Belcher and sit, but is that really going to help you that much? I mean, you do have the heal bot, so, like, you don't want to die. I mean, you obviously don't want to die. You want to live until you can, like, play Moltens and heal bot or something. But there's just so much damage on the board. It's so yeah, hard heal to clear. Heal bot is not, it's not a winning play. You can't heal. I don't think you can heal. Well, yeah, yeah, you don't heal bot here, but I was wondering if you tapped, like... Yeah. Just... I, I would have went YOLO tap there, just like hope to pick up the Sun Fury. Life coach looks furious. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I like this tech. Enclave Zuka. Yeah, it's really interesting. You don't typically see that in a, in a mid-range hunter. I, I'm surprised you went for that so quickly. There might have been some merit to just double shreddering, trading mm -hmm. in, and leaving him at 13 HP. Okay. But I guess he can clear off the first half of the slime really, really easily this way, so... Yep. It's fine. It's a lot of damage. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's, a, that's a really good turn. Okay, so... Life Coach is basically being put on drawing a Sun Figure and Argus. He's already used yes. one of each. Yeah, Sun would be ideal. Oh, oh my goodness! That's amazing! Oh my goodness! Wow! <laughs> oh man! So he, he can actually double mold and taunt them up and even uh, even heal, but but it's like he, he might still lose. I mean, I'm not like, calling it. Okay, that was like okay, life coach wins, but that that's giving him some hope. And without that draw, he would have been completely out of it. Well, like a Maz can like clear the phone so easily, like the the moments are dead does... on board. It does take a lot of minions for Amaz to clear it. And he, after after those trades, Amaz should be kind of weak to a uh, to a Hellfire or Shadow Flame. Exactly, and uh, and a Life Coach might draw into that, and he can also heal. The most important thing is he can also heal bot this turn, so it's just like mm -hmm. so good because he he at least has that body following it up. Yep, I think you got a heal, but we haven't seen any kill comments just yet. And like even if there's an owl, just like the two moldens won't hold up. Well, okay, okay, the belts are okay. That, I guess that's the other option. Like if, if you don't, if you don't heal, but then you would belcher. Yeah, belcher is um, ballsy to say the least. Yes. <laughs> so, would would it have been like lethal last then if he if he had the kill command? I think so. So so maybe because of that he can like kind of assume that there's no kill command in the hand. Maybe he is, but he might be putting him on quick shot. Hunters are on quick shot now, so. That's true. Okay. Eagle horn bow. Doesn't that just quite not do, really do anything. I like, yeah, okay. trade in the web spinner first. King crush. King crush. <laughs> no, not this time. You save that, I think. You don't no. need the extra damage. I think so, though. When, when, he will be, eventually, he's gonna pick up a. An unleash, and then it should be a nice combo. All right, time to smork it up. Yes. Yeah, I like bowing here. But the thing is, do you trade with the three three, or do you just smork it? He's already played a belcher and like all of his taunts, mm -hmm. but I guess I guess he's going for board now. I could, yeah, I, I like it. It's fun. Yeah. Seems alright, because now there's no trade for the Shredder. If you want face, Life Coach would be at 8 HP. Yeah, it's, he wouldn't die to kill Command or anything, so... Mm -hmm. it's fine. No, ro no rope there. Snap. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might have, like, slowed down a little bit, just, like, consider it up first. 
I, yeah, I might have considered a tap as well. I, I feel like you can still lose board pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Okay. Damn. I don't. I don't know. Maybe tapping was okay. I kind of like this more I like think about it. The Belzer is is pretty tough to deal with still. So. Yeah. And Ahmad's already played most of his threats. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the big ones, at least, are mid-range ones. Yeah. But then what's in favor of like the tapping is that Black Witch only has one card in his hand. Even though it's a good card, it's like your life total is 11. You are up against the Hunter. You know that the hero power is like going to be dealing a lot. So maybe like trying to fish for for some kind of help would have, would have been useful. I mean, game's over in like five turns. Just hero power. Yeah. <laughs> Has to be like a shadow plan or something. So you have to draw into... I mean, you just play Rag, I guess. But you have to draw into a... Um... Heal bot in the next five turns. Jaraxxus. Yeah, or Jaraxxus. I'm not sure if Life Coach actually runs Jaraxxus. I'm not. Oh, I, I don't... that's true. I think that now that you bring it up, most people do play Jaraxxus, but I, I I've seen it too. I've actually paid attention to that. I've seen Life Coach play without yeah. without it, so uh, I, probably it's not there. Hitting the Armor Smith wasn't really relevant there because um didn't change the timer. Mm-hmm. Smork, smork, smork. I don't like playing the Timber Wolf here. Mm -hmm. You'd uh, save it for Kill Command? or? Uh, I think I would, but... Either one, yeah, okay. I guess Kill Command is lethal now anyways, but if he didn't hit that juggle... He still had another Snake Trap, but why did... Uh... That is true, if... Oh my goodness. What a... Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, to say the least, that's uh, not very good, draw. Do you tap? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well... You're dead no matter what if you tap. <laughs> I, I don't know. You you don't tap. Then you're put on exactly heal butt. Yeah, I guess. Defender of Argus? Oh, that is true. If, if he runs two. Yeah, if he runs two. It's looking pretty hopeless right now. Two outer. Mm -hmm. he, he does play two heal butts. Knowing life butts, there are two heal butts for sure. Yeah. I actually like two heal butts in uh, analog. He could actually play one of those mountain giants if it's freezing. Mm -hmm. And then he could snipe the 3-2, um, and then draw into Jaraxxus, GG. Easy game, easy life. Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> wow! He like, drew the- okay, so he needed to top deck the Sun Fury, he drew it. And then he drew the worst two cards in his deck, and then he drew the best card in his deck. Okay, I guess that kind of balances out. Yeah. Almost freezing trap. This rag is actually really, really important right now. It's so big, like if he, if he lands on the juggler. It's actually like it takes a, uh, I'm a, if it lands actually, on the rag, I mean on the on the juggler and Nama's blanks on the draw. No one leaves, no kill command. Okay. Yeah, well that is probably the worst yeah. one. All his face, but yeah. Or or face, yeah. Face, face would have been actually even even was. I think so then. Do you play the owl like mm, I think you uh, No, is there any point in playing it? But what the rag won't hit it? How good is the meaning? Because it does allow you to get like through one. And the well, thing like, is, yeah, put the rack targeting, I yeah. guess. The thing is, like, you know that uh, he doesn't have any more belchers left because he played both. Yeah. So, like, you're not going to be able to uh, silence two taunt targets. Yeah, but there's also, like, it's kind of likely that both of the beasts are getting cleared and then the kill command is, like, not so good anymore. Exactly. But he kind of, on, on the other hand, he doesn't need the, the beast anymore because the, the, the Warlock is at. At 5 HP. Do you trade into the 1 1 here? No, I think 1 1 is what you leave up. Well, you're like dead to unleash regardless. You're not put on any more of a clock if you kill the owl, if you leave up the owl. And uh, your zombie chow won't okay. die, so you have a better chance of lethaling him. Fair enough. I don't know. So you, uh, you trade the. The heal bot for them, for the juggler and uh, use the zombie charm on the timber wall. Yeah. Or other way around, because you can't leave the juggler up. There's no yeah, way. Yeah, you, you definitely trade the yeah, then, then the Ragon phase would be in lethal for our mass. Because if the rag hits face, that's 8 damage. 8, and then if it hits face again, that's another 8 damage. That's 16, that's 24. If the juggler hits, then that's lethal. So he can actually win this game if rag hits face. Here and oh, Maz wins. Sure. Yeah, the next. Yeah, yeah, the next one. Got it. 
but he needs to do the yeah that play. I like it. Yep. There we go. That's right. Sweet. All right, so Rag needs to hit face. And it does. Okay. Wow. So yeah, life coach. Oh my! Oh. It's gonna come into like. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh, this is ridiculous. Okay, no, Amaz. Uh, uh, Amaz is smarter than this. Okay, good. I like it. Yeah. Don't just smork it up. Yeah, that, that's really, really good play last time. And then. <laughs> oh. Uh, wow. I don't think there's any card that saves life, coach. No. Probably not. Farsi. I mean, you have to tap. I mean, you're just dead if you don't. But if he knows this, because both of the heal are gone. What can he? What can he even get? Uh, the only card, I believe. I'm trying to like think if there's like some kind of line of play where you. No. Power overall. Okay, okay, got it. I got it. You play the Sylvanas. You kill one of the boom the bots. bots. Boom hit the Sylvanas. It then the rack hits the other boom bot. Oh my god. Boom, kills the Sylvanas. You steal the Doctor Boom. That's actually that's actually the right play. <laughs> that's it's like that is legit the right play. So. <laughs> Oh my goodness. It would be so hilarious, but I mean, you gotta get it like one out. Uh, okay, yeah. Boo! Man. Boo. <laughs> How sick would that have been? He ends up winning the game because he does that. He would have won if he actually, like, if they both had yeah, skill correct. Won. And, oh, oh like, no damage was drawn by Amaz. That's what I mean, like, sickest plan. Oh well. Yeah. Okay, that's the kill coming. Uh, so I'm gonna ruin the farm anyway. That was a that was a pretty good match. I like yeah, that. amazing game one. Oh yeah, my usually god. Usually hunter versus yeah, usually hunter versus like some other class doesn't go like that, but that was no. it's a fun one. Like the hunter matches tend to be kind of like okay, well if you enjoy fast paced action, hunter is for you, but it's like <laughs> fast it's, uh, it's no action. Uh, not, not my personal favorites, let's just say that. I, I don't enjoy like Hunter all that much. I, the, uh, okay, Hunter is fine, but there are some other class that I would prefer to watch. But that was like the best Hunter stuff that I've ever seen. Yeah. At least up there, like one of the, the best. That's why you play Snake Trap sometimes. It just wins you the game straight oh, up. Yeah, definitely. That Snake Trap. But was it even... It was from the scientist. Mm -hmm. That RNG, I mean, it was completely random, and most likely it's like two freezings and one snake. It go could also be one freezing and one snake. Yeah. But still, like, if the scientist brought a freezing the trap. freezing trap? I'm pretty sure the game would have went live this way. Wow. That's, that's so uh, interesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, life coach still with all his three decks. Amala's no longer with the hunter. He has a druid and a warrior left. Why do you play against the greedy lineup of life coaches? I think you play Druid. And Warrior uh, doesn't seem favored that. against anything except for Handlock. Yeah. So right as you said that, Amaz, Warrior, life coach, Druid. So life coach ties it up. <laughs> Not just yet. <laughs> Amaz might play Grim Patrons. It's possible. Uh, I haven't seen... Amaz played Warrior in a while, have I, actually? No, he did. No, he played Warrior against me. What am I talking about? Did he play Cream Patron? No, it was Standard oh. Warrior. Okay, so it's probably the Standard one here, too. Mm -hmm. I'm so hyped about the Cream Patron thing. I don't know. <laughs> like, oh, like, the meta game is getting refreshed, and I feel like it's really powerful if you play it right. But it's also a deck that you kind of have to practice a little bit. It's not something you just like... Oh, yeah. I'll, I haven't played a single game with it, but I'm just gonna bring it out to the door. It's not that, but it's actually really tricky to play. Just try that with Freeze Mage. <laughs> yeah, like it's so easy to rope with it as well. I've done it so many times. Oh my goodness. Like, the past those. few days, it's just like trying to count up, like when there's three whirlwinds or something. Like trying to get the, the last Grim Patron in. Like it's not enough that you start doing the combo, but once the rope starts, you have to like start way before it. You need like a whole minute to do the thing. Yeah, you need to maximize value for sure in yeah. those in those patrons. Okay, so it looks like uh, Amaz Just can't not. really tell yet. Yeah, well, most likely it's no no patrons. Yeah, well, that's a bit of a bummer, but um, it's a bit of a bummer. Yeah, let's see. Ooh, <laughs> well, that's how you that's how you play Jude. You draw yeah. Innervate Wild Grove Shade. But another thing about it is that he's kind of tough. Oh, that's not a good card at all. 
he's kind of top decking here. I, I like this a lot. Like, usually, if he had, like, let's say, he had a pilot of the Shredder, I would really love the innervate shade. But now with this play, just coining out the wild crowd and going shade next, and he gets to keep the innervate instead of the coin, which might let him play lore faster if he draws exactly. that. And I'm pretty sure Life Coach adds, like, a ton of cycle to his Druid decks, which is really important. Oh, yeah. uh, he usually runs Nourish, he usually even... I think he even runs Drakes with Nourish, which is, like, crazy, crazy, yeah. crazy. He's, he is known for his uh, greedy type of deck building. And going going for the late game, going for the card draw. Do you... Uh, well, this is another... another it's awkward because turn. you want to cycle the Wrath, but you might not be able to. I think there's merit in Wrathing for three and then just trading and then going face because he used a cool Taskmaster already. That's true. Uh, if you if he attacks it with your weapon or his weapon, you're like not too hurt about that, I guess. Well, we we can see the card, so so yeah, it's like it's, really it's easy cool. to tell that uh, it would be the best play to just like kill the cruel task with the shade. But if you are a life coach here, it's not that obvious because there's a lot of like weapons that potentially kill it. It's like Amos can't deal with it if it's on something right now. But there's a lot of things that can go wrong. It could be another cruel taskmaster. It could be fireworks. It could be a death spell. It could be a it could be a lot of things. It's kind of kill free, or maybe not for free, but uh, but that's just the the potential of the shade for later on in the game is huge. Yeah, because the, is, because the warrior struggles to take, to kill it from the shade, from the salt. Mm, so he he opts to um, just cycle the wrath because he feels like he doesn't have enough cycle in his deck. That's usually what you do when you're uh, druid, or like not enough cycle in your deck, but in your hand to you know consistently draw into lore or other cards. Yeah, so that's usually. I, I actually, I, I really like that play. I, I think I would have leaned towards the same one, even though the other one with the god given would have worked out better. Oof. Wow, another combo piece. All he's missing is like Thoris, and then he can go oh. like, some ridiculous combo. Face there, that's. Ballsy. <laughs> yeah, he didn't even rope. <laughs> oh, it does make a lot of sense. Like, how do you, how does a warrior kill it from there, like behind the taunt? It's not easy at all. That is true. I guess if there was like a no. You could dust bite it. I mean you could dust bite this turn and next turn I don't know. Dead spite. Yeah. To finish with the dead spite. Yeah, that's true. But it's still like a lot of damage. It was four there, it would be five more and then it would be another five, so that would be fourteen damage from the Wow. Yeah, that low thub was very, very important this turn. Yeah, it would have been a rack coming down for sure if it wasn't for that. But look it's... at that hand. Like what if he throws like an emperor next turn? Then he go like he can go can he go? Yes, he can actually. If he draws an Emperor, he plays an Emperor on turn seven. He can go turn eight, Force of Nature, Force of Nature, like Innervate, Innervate, Savage Roar, right? Because that's 12 mana. Oh my. I want to see it happen. That's ridiculous. I want to see it. Just please, can you, Life Coach, can you uh, draw an Emperor, please? Give him time, he has to rope first. Oh yeah. <laughs> and no need to rush things. He has a lot of damage in hand, though. Uh, yeah, I like this. Just go face. I don't. I don't think you can. No, you do definitely do not yeah. trade. No, 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 no way you trade. I like that one trade, but because like the armor smith might might get him uh, a lot of health anyway. So it's like the damage that you miss on face, you just kind of make up for uh, with with, uh, with the armor <laughs> with the, not preventing the armor draw. Armor like gains. Don't think. Just et on six. Uh huh. Uh, BGH draw was really, really, really good for Amaz also, because Life Coach has a rag in his hand. I'm counting it's up. 15 plus 8. It's 23 damage right now. Oh my goodness. Amaz's hand is actually really, really good. It is, it is, but uh, that, <laughs> that, like, the Life Coach has had also. I think you can even afford to, like, huh. You Belcher here. I know, I know I see the hands, but, like, uh, you can protect... I, I kind of like it. Yeah, you can protect your shade with the Belcher, but he disagrees. Goes for the rag play. He might yeah. actually go face here. Oh no, innervate. Okay. I was I, gonna say if he goes face, he could set up for lethal, but. Yeah. Okay. I kind of liked it more, just like Belcher and Hero mm -hmm. Power, because with those double innervates, it's like insane amount of burst that you can do. You have access to like 15 damage per man. Yeah, you could uh, you could draw into another Savage Roar, just have like double roar, Emperor. Pretty much but I mean, that's like I can understand that play too because they're like with the rag. Okay, you either boot him low, 
or you take out the Ember, or, so it's not like anything too bad can happen. Yeah. But, but, but what, what was the downside of that is that now he's going to have fairly weak turn 8, and he can't do the combo yet, because both of the Enervits are gone. And Amaz can just, like, play all of his cards, because Emperor. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, this is difficult, for sure. sure it is. Like, no, this is like no, uh, no perfect play here. It's, it's pretty bad. He's so low as well, like, you need, we need to take it into consideration how, how, how low the druid is on, on HP. I mean, Belzer is kind of okay, and you can kind of guess that the, the warrior does not run an owl. Like, in, what, owl is not a common card in warrior right now. Yeah. I would probably Belcher and go face because you have no other option. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, th I think so though. Uh, you, you can't just, you know, like swipe face or force of nature fit. You can force of nature, kill off the 4-2, and then go face with the rest, I guess. That's okay yeah. as well, but I think Belcher is a little bit better. I think you die to too many things if you force of nature here and leave 10 damage up. You don't die to anything. That's oh, my... actually, yeah. no, maybe that's not... Like, Cruel Taskmaster and the weapon, exactly. something like that. But one Cruel Task is already played. Oh, maybe it's actually pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Doing it. Oh, whoa. He is trying to go for board after he just gave a Maz, like... Oh, did he get it in? Oh, oh no! my goodness! Oh, no, no, no! Did it... no that did not just happen! Uh oh, happen. Rope Coach, why? <laughs> oh... Oh, taking his glasses his off. off. The pale fish. Stress is getting to him. Oh no. That must be devastating. I mean, the game was probably over anyways, but that's that's unfortunate. I I don't know. Like, oh my goodness, that's really really devastating. Just look at him. Well, the the little bit of <laughs> the half of him, half of the face. Uh, shaking his head in disbelief. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, it's, I've, I've done that too. It happens to everyone. It's not yeah. too big of a deal, it's just unfortunate. It really is. Well, if I'm out, leaves up to 7-7. Seven, seven. I think you just trade everything. Yeah, I mean... I don't care. Yeah. How do you lose from there? If he goes for base, he actually loses the game, right? Uh, I think um, so. Maz is better than that. Maz is better than that. It, it would have been game. It would have, I think. Uh, I, uh, I don't, I don't, maybe. Well, hmm, there's some armor smith thing is, but still. Okay. Well, don't give up, coach. Don't give up. Oh, oh man, look at <laughs> He's not even looking at the game. He's just. Oh, I can feel his pain. Oh. oh boy, what did I do? <laughs> I made a huge mistake. No. Ah, uh, he just looks so demoralized after that play. <laughs> yeah, I would too. So, but if we like get back into the game, I think you belts and shade. Yeah. You swipe. You could also swipe you face. Could... Cause but it's, no, we're not space. Maybe the armor smith. It's like then you could set up the trying to like count this up. Like if he if he swiped the armor smith and played the shade, how much would that be? Would it be like yeah? But there's another shield made in coming. Them too much, yeah. yeah. Oh man, you attack with the. Yeah. Uh, now you can attack with the Belcher because there's a shade up, so it doesn't matter. If there was no shade up, you would attack with uh, something else. Oh, yeah, the weapon. That makes the weapon, yeah, that's good too. Because it makes the combo kind of bad against the Belcher. And it's actually a big deal against Boss when it's Savage or the Belcher is at 5 and not 4. Yeah, and not with the shade on board, but with. Um, oh, yeah, the shade so, helps. Yeah. That's the thing. You have to play around that stuff. Mm -hmm. And Life Coach. Now you. Uh... He's not tilted from that. He needs to. Uh... Being yeah, down, just... being down too well, you need to, you know, get your head in the game and. Yep, and it's not over. He can still swipe for a doomsayer. <laughs> that is true, actually. That's probably his best chance to win this game. I think I, I don't see anything else. It's his only chance. I, it's not a good chance, but it's like the only one. Is there like a play with? No, I don't think there's anything else. Yeah, you swipe for doomsayer. 
Do it. I wonder if, like, in his head, he's still thinking about the rope, or if he's like actually considering the play for this turn. Not sure. Okay. So you can clear off uh, the armor. Uh, the. I think he still needs to go for the. I don't know. Tombs, uh, not to be a dead to the weapon. You're dead, no matter what you trade you do. He, here. Needed, he needed to go for the doom, sir. Oh, maybe not actually. If he gets uh, less than two attack minion. Oh man, that ordering, but didn't really matter. Oof. Well, Amaz is going to take the lead 2 0 against Life Coach. Yeah, well, that was quite a memorable game, I would say. Yeah. It was, uh, it was uh, a bit, uh, quite devastating for Life Coach, but he needs to get his head together. The series is not over yet. That is is down to zero, but it's not over. There's right. still uh, there's still hope. They, it's not like we uh, we haven't seen it before that somebody will come back from a zero two deficit. If he if if he just like uh, like all of his decks seem so kind of okay against the Droid of Amaz. Exactly. Like Paladin is favored. Warlock can definitely win. Yeah. Uh, Druid, you know, coin flip, but still yeah, definitely but, uh, definitely draws. fine. Yeah, you can. Easily, or not easily, but you know, it's a pretty good chance you're going to come back. It's not like it's Freeze Mage against Warrior or anything. It's definitely no. decks that can win. Yeah, it's not hopeless at all. But he really needs to, like, just to focus, focus on that. And, like, just forget about it. Like, take maybe, like, like a bit of a, like, walk. Like, uh, just, just, like, chill and, like, focus on the next one. Because, that, because for a lot of players, we have seen it in the past, that it can, like, when something like that happens, that it's not so easy to recover and it's just, like, lingers there and you just can't like forget about it and it affects the place in the following games exactly. then you just like drop the entire series because of that but um i think life coach is a player who can like he, he he's a poker player he's he's lost i'm sure he, that he has had like bad streaks and he's lost some money but um like at, at some sessions like not always winning like crazy so he knows how to like handle, handle it when when things don't go his way and like get his shit together yeah, he definitely needs to. Uh, by the way, if any of you guys are interested in becoming a caster, Kingwin is looking for casters. If you want to become one, just send a VOD of yourself being a good caster uh, to esports at kingwin.net. It's uh, yes. pretty fun to cast. I don't know. I, this is my first time on an actual stream aside from random casting, and I enjoy it a lot. I would suggest if anyone like wants to give it a shot, Go for it. Yeah, me and Dogger, we are just like passing by, just like filling in for Lothar and, uh, and Noxious here. But if you are like somebody who would actually want to do this regularly, now is the time to send your application. Now now you have a good job. Again, like, you know, opportunities like this one might not uh, represent themselves if casting is something that you want to do. Next game will be Amas playing Druid against Life Coach's Druid. That's kind of a. I think that's a bit of a bad side for life coach. If he feels like the mirror is his best shot. I, uh, I'm actually surprised you didn't go with Paladin here because the um, tiebreaker actually matters. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Paladin's a little safer of a bet against Druid, but... Well, it's... yeah. I, I kind of... I don't think it's like all that good for Paladin. I think it's like actually like fairly close to even. It might, it might be like slightly favored. Because of like how well uh, you can sometimes set up the Alder Peacekeeper and stuff like you play a lot if they play their lot if you just like but have that one good Alder Peacekeeper. That is true. But that that's enough to swing the game. It just uh, ultimately, you know, Druid games come down to wild growth, innervate, yeah. things like that. So yeah. uh, looks like they're both playing innervate Druid. That's good. But uh, also maybe another thing the way why Life Coach wants to bring his Druid instead of the Paladin is his Paladin is the slower type. So he doesn't have access to. He probably doesn't play two quartermasters. Oh. Because quartermaster is one of the key cards against the druid. Because as soon as the druid can't like clear the board, if you master on turn three and there's no swipe, you coin out the quartermaster. It can be it's like the game can end right there. So so not having the quartermaster or not having two quartermasters might might be the reason why he thinks druid's better. That is true. I I didn't even think about that. We're not running two quartermasters is actually kind of bad against druid. Okay. Here we go. Game three. 
This is a King Wing Pro League week eight, day two. Amas up 2 0 against Life Coach. And this is starting hand. Sorry. Uh, they're not and good for bad, but both. God, bad for both. It's better I mean, for a Maz because he has Emperor, but yeah, Emperor. Emperor is a big deal. That's true. Like other oh. than that. Oh, whoa! whoa I don't that's... think you play it, do you? You need so you... the Emperor next turn. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot, actually. I th yeah. I think that's the that's the way to go because how does Druid deal five damage? You can't. It's like a Mukla on three, and you're just like, well, ah, I have yeah. to leave it up a turn, and I could deal with it next turn. But then by that time, like you know. Oh, life it's coach's really... hand is just wow, so bad. Wow. So that's gonna be an emperor, right? Like, there's there's no way he's gonna play anything else. Yep. How do how would you pass up on a third, turn three emperor against another druid? This is no way. On the bright side, he can clear with swipe innervate, but that's too <laughs> and like yeah. <laughs> Throwing away your tempo card. Silence. <laughs> it's so bad at the silence. If he gets another innervate or something. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Well, is that a thing? You just play your own? I think you do. I think I think that's the only way you're back in this. At the at the very least, you know Amaz can't swipe and hero power. Because it's uh five mana, he only has four. Yeah. So I, I think just you go. Do for it. it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess there could be like three mana swipe into like one mana broth or something, but that it's it's pretty unlikely. And you only get punished by that or keeper in wrath or something. Yeah, I I feel like you're behind enough. Like you, I don't think you win this game by swiping and hero powering. So no, I I don't think so either. Like you gotta go for it. And like even even though there's like some combinations with broth which would deal with it, like those those two that we mentioned, either swipe broth or keeper broth, you gotta do it. I mean. You gotta play to win, and just hope that Amas doesn't have an answer to it either, and has to trade the Emperors, then you kinda end up even. I agree. And he... Does he agree? He He's agrees. Good. good. I am glad. Yep. Me too. <laughs> it's always comforting and like reassuring whenever your plays are the same as like, you know, another good player. You're just like, oh, okay, good. Yeah, phew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, silence go face? Oh no. I think a Maj trade. I would trade. trade. I mean, oh, right. man, that is greedy. I mean, I would not no, trade. You can't, you can't trade. Never mind. I lied. Yeah, his hand is bad. Okay. You're getting the force of nature. Four <laughs> 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 mana. <laughs> and this is what we call balance. Mm-hmm. So swipe hero power. Yeah, I uh, think so. You could force actually. I think force is actually might be a little like bit force. better. I, you, I I feel like uh, I, I wouldn't want to take the five. I really wouldn't want to take the five. I agree. And you, you just drew another force as well. That's another big deal. Exactly. Yeah. And like swipe, I don't know. Two mana swipe is no joke. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because if you place those Azure tracks and stuff, it might be something you will want to do a bit later. So uh, not too bad. <laughs> five mana lore. Okay. <laughs> what a joke. It's so. <laughs> oh, like both both of the players have like all of their cards innervated right now. So this three innervates for everybody. This is Hearthstone. The thing is, like, lore isn't good because like he needs to deal with it though. Does yeah. he? Or is he just gonna leave it up? I I don't know. I don't think you can afford to deal with it. Keeper swipe, um, kill it. I guess. On the bright side, Life Coach actually has a pretty bad hand. Six mana rag. I don't know. I mean, there's no answer to it just yet. That's true. Okay. I think you all know it is. I'm just yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually pretty good. Boom is going to be an issue, but he does have the swipe for it. So, yeah, this could definitely pay off pretty well. I think that all the other options are so, like, bad. You just go for it, even though you might be a bit scared of the potential of uh, Big Game Hunter. Does he hit the sh Oh, he does hit the chase. That's Jeez. the best hit for sure. It's same as even though we, we saw it as a three three, it's it just like the same as if it was a four four. It's just like it's, it's just strong. like the dudes didn't have inner or wild growth, but they all just got wild growth. <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow. Well, that's a draw. Amaz bullied. Life wow. Last like game. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, this yeah. is good, yeah. Good start. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you, you uh you swipe the keeper, you um BGH. Do you is there any merit in like silencing a boom bot and then swipe and then BGH? That way it, like could. What if the boom bot's like killed I I think I actually like that a lot. It's yeah. just a weird play. It's a really weird situation, it's but like with double, double keepers. Yeah. I hope he does it actually. Oh. Yeah, you silence one of the boom bots, then you swipe and then you BGH. So you don't want your rag to be weak. Yeah, and you also, you want to definitely play in the big game hunter last. You don't want a boom bot to kill it. Yeah, he does go for it. I like it a lot. I didn't see that play straight away, but now that you brought it up, I like it so much. Oh. Four damage to the face. I, th I think That's the only the play is, I don't know. I was going to say, like, force of nature face and hope for an innervate. Oh my goodness. Wow. So he can actually combo here because of the two discount on the first force of nature. If you, I mean, he kind of has to. Wait, it's if a you full clear. Well, you could you could clear, but you could just go for lethal next turn by clearing off the four two also. Okay. Um, like one of the three ends. Yeah. If, I think I put him down to six. It would be exactly lethal if there's no heal. Yeah, but there's going to be a hero power. That's the that's the thing. So you can't go for that. I don't think. No, I, I don't think. I think it's too risky. You have to go for the clear. Yeah. Probably. Doesn't feel great, but I, I don't really see like many options. What if you just pause? No, you gotta, you gotta do the combo. Yeah. I was like trying to think if there's a way to like only use the expensive pause of nature, but yeah. Board clear seven mana. <laughs> Don't drag BGH in a keep round. Ugh, disgusting. Uh, Shredder Shade, right? Yep. Seems good. So next turn, ugh. next turn he can like pause of nature, keeper. Oh, he, can, I, can you do it like when you silence one of your Force of Nature three ends? Do you get to keep it? I think you do. I'm pretty <laughs> sure you do. <laughs> I think there was like some running jokes of, about like when the when the what's this, Wailing Soul came out that you can like at ten mana you can go Force of Nature in the Wailing Soul to silence all of your minions to keep them. Yeah, I think it like, works like that. Life, yeah, it, it does actually. Life Coach is gonna take uh, game number three. Bringing the score to two, one for life, coach. It's really good. This was a really important match. It was one of his like. Absolutely. Yeah. Big game hunter was pretty nice draw. <laughs> we also have to like uh, keep it in mind that he did have the rack on the board. So even if he didn't throw the big game hunter, it's possible that the rack would have just taken out the Doctor Boom anyway. Then he would just like play another minion and yeah. Yeah. But uh, re yeah, that, if if the um, if life coach still had some uh, some. Uh, Stuff going on in his head about the rope thing. I think that's uh, something that helps him a lot to get over it. Getting yeah, that win in the middle. He definitely played well um, that game. I'm pretty sure he made every decision yeah. correct, which is, you know, obviously yeah, I think good. So. Yeah, you know, even the silencing the boom thing, which was like not that clear. It's just it's like, yeah, just like that. I, I don't think he made a single mistake there. A bit of a rough start, but like innovating his own own uh, stories on there. Pretty tough call, or can be. But um, yeah, pulled all the stops, and uh, now he's going. We are going into game four. He will be bringing his paladin this time around against Amnesty Street. Hmm. I would, I, I would still give the edge to Paladin. I think Paladin <laughs> is favored against Street. Maybe not. Maybe you know, not if you don't run quarter, double quarter master. But it's still, you know, I think it's a little favored. I think it should do fine. Like there shouldn't yeah. be that many. Like you definitely have a fighting chance. Like it's even if you're uh, at the disadvantage, it's not a big one. Yeah. Mm. It, it it comes down to like how big of the disadvantage it is. It comes down to the the exact contents of his deck. Like if it's like super creative with uh with uh, Kelvazar and like pile of the sky golem stuff like that, him it uh, the druid might be too fast because that's one of the like faster type of druids. We didn't even see like uh, scenarios or anything like that. Just like double combo from our mouse. Yeah, double combo, rag, boom. Oh, he did. I don't think we saw rag, but boom is in there. Yeah. I feel like uh, whoever gets a be better start here, we're gonna like a, kind of know the winner by turn four, unless it's like really close. But um, there's, there's like a fairly big chance that one of the players will just run away with it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's usually how it goes Wild Growth Innervate or, you know, just Tempo, mm -hmm. Aldors, and things like that. Yep, if one of the players misses their early plays, because the, the, the slow paladin 
and the druid also like they have very limited amount of two drops for example so if the player who misses a two drop might be in bad shape yeah and it looks like amaza's hand is not all that great no it's like a little bit of everything <laughs> it's like a mix but it's like not not exactly the stuff you want it's just uh mid-range Knife Juggler is a knife is a card. Yeah, Knife Juggler is a card you usually see with double musterless. That's true, but it's also possible he only plays one. That I think is, I've seen some list with like one, just to have an extra thing to play on turn three. The masters might still, but I I would imagine that the master for battles are still both in there, even if there's only one quarter master. Yeah, I would say so. It's a little bit of, okay. So it is. Yeah, you're right. It is slower. It runs acolyte. Mm. I'd say this is a little bit of a slow start from the Paladin, though. And the Druid, of course, but... Yeah. But it, the Druid does curve quite quite beautifully. It's like 4, 5, 6. The Paladin is like... Eh, but there's the, there's the, there's the board clear for everything. Yeah. But it's like... Huh. No, it, it looks a bit better for the Druid right now. I would now. say it's better for the Druid as well. Although he does have a quality Consecrate for clear, so... We'll see mm -hmm. how that goes. Yep, how much value does he get with it? That minion from the um, Shredder was actually pretty good. Yeah, buffing, yeah, buffing the Keeper is always good. Mm -hmm. And Buffing's having free. the three toughness on it, it's like, gonna clear dudes for a long time. Exactly. It's funny how uh, even when you play like something like Handlock against against the Paladin, if you if your Mountain Giant gets gets uh, older, it's like okay, well one eight, it's like dude <laughs> exactly. It's gonna clear dudes for uh, every turn. Go ahead and muster. I don't it's care. It's not even this bad. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, I think here you have to play Belcher. No. I think so. I, I, I don't see think anything else. Yeah. Me neither. I would Belcher. be shocked if he played anything else. You could run in the the one one, but I don't see how he kills it. So probably just leave it up at that case. Mm. It seems like the Bel Belcher matches up fairly well against those. Cause there's like four power on the board only. Yeah. What? Wow! What? I did not expect this. Okay. So I like. I, I kind of like it. I can. I definitely see the merit to it. It's fairly weak against like Druid of the Claw Charge. Okay. Well, not. And Belcher. <laughs> but I would like Altor, snap Druid of the Claw Charge. Yeah. Get more card draw, right? Yeah. I mean, life is. But that that like Belcher from Amas was really surprising to me. I would like instantly just like charge into that. I think. I think I agree with you. Yeah, I do. No, like okay, well. Uh, I guess that the, maybe the line of thinking was that he wants to like have a taunt ready, so the emperor will have a chance to survive. Maybe, uh, maybe he runs double equality, and that's his reasoning. Mm -hmm. That would make but the most sense to me. Yeah. With now with that belt, sir, it actually kind of looks like the emperor might survive two turns, or no, never mind. Boom. Yeah, emperor will survive in my opinion. Uh -huh. It's pretty scary, the boom. Do you have to do it? You have to, I think. I guess so. I mean, it's not like you're silencing the belts or back to 3 3. I mean, you could uh, attack in, consecrate, silence, after. Yeah. Consecrate, I mean, attack in, consecrate. Uh, I, I think you boom. Yeah. It feels so bad to leave the Emperor up, but the boom is quite powerful. And if, if like, anything from it survives, the KT might be insane. Well, he has taken a bit like different yeah. lines of play that we we would have thought in the past. So he might be scared of dying yeah. to combo. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't like Belcher very much. I think that's just like putting you way too far behind. Mm -hmm. But I guess okay. you're behind if Emperor lives another turn. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh... There's quite a bit of like savage or value, but how do you use the efficient list like way? Would you, would you add just a uh, lore? I would probably just lore. Yeah, I think it's okay. You then can like give it uh, an outgrowth if you want. You might need the mana. Oh yeah. It's not terrible. You have enough card draw to double lore. Mhm. Mm so you take out the belter with the tourist mm -hmm. and then throw the one once into the slime. Kind of lose a bit of tempo, and actually, that might make a huge difference because uh, Life Coach actually has KT in hands. 
Yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah. That KT is going to be so huge. It wow. Can't, can't quite clear the board, but it does a lot no, of work. It, it's going to be amazing. But how does Amaz like pl play around the KT? He might be suspecting that. Because Life Coach has shown uh, that he plays Keldeside in, in many of the past tournaments. So if Amaz remembers that from, from the previous matches, if he's been watching Life Coach play, if he remembers that, he might be considering the but, potential of KT. How do you and, how do you, how do you play around KT though? <laughs> you clear as much as you can. That's true, but he can't. I mean, if he drew the claw charges, then I'll I will be impressed. But then he gets cleared by consecrate, so it's like not even that good. That's like what I was thinking. Like, okay, he's going for it. Wow, that's impressive. That's, that's how you play around it. That's okay. That is good. That that's really good. Oh, okay. consecrate well, is still good, good though. Still fine. Yeah, it does the same job. Consecrate, Juggler, Absolutely. Shield of Minibot. Yes. Absolutely. Actually, you... Um, so clean. You Juggler first, right? So, in case you don't want to sacrifice your 1-1? One -one? I don't know. Uh, I don't think you really care. I, th I think you just take... Consecrate first. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Consecrate, then sure. Juggler, yeah. then Minibot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, why not? Yeah. Might as well. 50-50. Save a 1-1. One -one. Oh, but yeah, it's still not too bad. You can't be too sad about that. I mean, no. it looks a little sad, but... <laughs> it's only like for the KT, it would have been meaningful. What a noob, he didn't draw first. <laughs> <laughs> for, for the KL design, it would have been nice to keep that. Yeah. But we can see that it would have just gotten like hero power down here. Ooh, oh, wow. I or think you it. can't Savage or now. I was, I was going to say you would you would Savage or the 3-2 um, off, but now you just, yeah, hand a big claw. I'm so. Uh, oh. Well, he's, well, so if he plays KT here and like juggles to the bear, I'm trying oh. to think. <laughs> you really go for that play? I think you play Boom. I was going to say I'm so impressed by the charging Druid of the Claw, but he taunted it up. But it's fine as a taunt too, like no big deal. Yeah. I think Boom is best. Boom and then uh, play your hero power. It's I a just, lot of juggles, you know, yep. just go for it. There's so many juggles. One's bound to hit on the 4 6. Yeah. There you go. Like all of the juggles I give it that don't go and face. Oh my goodness, I actually landed all of it. Okay. That's fine, that's actually. Yeah, fine. I guess. Why not? Like, that's trading. Probably trading into the. Yeah. You know. Amaz actually doesn't have a swipe. I, oh. Oh, what did you <laughs> say? What did you say? Uh, I didn't hear. <laughs> Oh man, oh, this is ridiculous. You can clear the board and get a shade up. How sick! Yeah, pretty good. Just not playing the shade first. <laughs> not gonna happen. There's the shade. The force of nature draw. Uh, no, he can't. He can't actually pull off four of the roars. There will be eleven men. Faith in the light. Yes. Dang, that's uh is See this is, this is why Paladin is good. They have threats that like Drew just can't deal with. Like Tyrion is still a six six body if you silence it. Yeah, it's so hard to deal with. That's actually like the reason why I personally Ooh. like a lot to play. But it's can I mean uh, it got silenced but still like six yeah. six body, pretty sick. I don't think there's any way for life coach to like deal one damage to his own theory. Equality would have been hilarious. Equality. Imagine equality. Equality KT. That would have been game over. But he played one equality already. There might not be another one. That would have been so sick. I don't know what you do here. Uh this is one you need an L and R turn in your deck. <laughs> yeah, this is. <laughs> this is not an easy turn. I would definitely think this is true. Just getting the KT out is not like that bad, but it's like a really big party. And one swipe is gone already, so this like it's gonna get like two for one still, even if the effect doesn't do anything. Uh, this is. Rough. But I mean, you might wanna get creative with the KT. You might be able to. Off the... uh, I'm sorry. sorry? You, might, you might be able to like tier, uh, lay on hands your Tyrion. Yeah, I was thinking about. It. I was actually just gonna say that. But he could also play like let's say true silver champion, kill off the lore, keep his kill off the lore with the true silver and the dude, and like kill off the um, keeper with the uh, Tyrion. Yeah, then, I think then that's the better. Tyrion is at four HP and can almost 
like I'm not, I'm not gonna say it's gonna it can trade with everything, but it can trade with a lot of things afterwards. Actually, the following like, turn and then the KT is here. still there. I, I agree. I, I like this play a lot. Yeah, I think I think this was the best turn. Whoa! Oh, that's aggressive. Okay. Yeah. I don't know about that play. Okay. How much is that? I think the you go for the clear. Yeah. Star. Uh, Twenty-five damage. Yeah. Yeah, you clear. If he, uh, if he combos, just the three and some that maybe go face with those minions on the board. I mean, if you savage or you probably want to like unstill the shade. I think. Or do you? I think you do. Uh... Maybe not. It, it dies perfectly to them. Oh, okay, so he's setting up for next turn. I Ooh. I like this also. You can even trade the shade into the three three, yeah, and just get greedy. Yeah. Because I I don't think it works. he had to consecrate. Otherwise, he would have killed the shade last turn. No, that That's, wasn't. It was a three three shade. That's but, actually a really good play. Yeah, I, I still like, like this. Yeah. So is he dead now? I, this is so stupid. He's a twenty seven HP. I mean, there is a lot of stuff on board, but this is Druid, man. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think Life Coach is getting a bit punished by going for face. Yeah. He, he should have traded. Yeah, the Keeper would have been off the board, and there's like one less threat. Yep. For the for the roars and everything. And also, like, his Tyrion would have been a bit lower, so it's like. Yeah. It, it would have not had. He could have lay on hands did afterwards. Yeah. Mm hmm. Huh. Am I counting up Amaz's damage right now? You have nine on the board. I think that's like game unless he kills the sli Belcher and Slime and like lay on himself. Because the damage in hand is fi hand is fifteen. Which is, there's three minions out. It's nine damage. Plus the roar is another six. So he's still dead. Yeah, I think he is. He's it's still dead. Off. Yeah, even if he lay on hands up to full. What could he have drawn? Uh, I don't know if there's anything he could draw into. He's just. It's actually even one I think over. he realizes this. Yeah. Yeah, I would KT and hero power and attack in. Mm -hmm. You have to attack in in case of a double roar or something. Yeah, but that's enough. I wonder if that equality turned two. I, I think it might have been a mistake. I'm not so sure. I, also, not trading with that tier. You need to use. Okay. So, which force of nature do you use and which savage turn? I uh, use the golden one. <laughs> They're all ago. Oh. Well, okay. You don't use the top tech one. Life coach is so nice. Yeah, he is. You you don't be in life coach. Almost taking the series three to one against life coach after some dramatic events in the second game was it? Second game, yes. If you just like tuned in, there was a bit of like roping happening. So it was like a really close one. Life coach missed the hero power attack. Yeah. On an Emperor Thorison, leaving it as a 5 1 on the board. It was pretty bad, and he, he was he seemed, it looked quite devastating afterwards. But he did pull his uh, himself uh, back together for the game, for the next game and uh, was was able to take one game. But uh, that was that, and uh, probably not strong enough against Druid this time. It, it seemed like it was a bit too slow after all with the KT and everything. I, yeah. I call it like, but it's not like that good up against that. I, I, like you said, it also the mid range is uh, is better, and uh, I think it might be better by a lot compared to that one. Yeah, he actually drew into three of his eight drops in the first like fifteen. He had lay on hands, he had KT, uh -huh. he had Tyrion. Like Tyrion's really good against Druid and so is KT, but Amaz did a pretty good job of playing around KT. He never gave a life coach an opportunity, so I mean really well played by Amaz. Yeah. So uh, well deserved three one. Life coach not looking quite as dominant as he was was before. He was at four and one, with in incredible. Uh, like, I believe he had uh, like the best tiebreaker score out of all the players in the entire league before that. He was like plus at plus ten, having won uh, fourteen games and only lost four. So now he's gonna go down a little bit, but still not looking too bad for him to Amas now three and five. Well. <laughs> 
still a, a bit uh, towards the bottom side. But if he wins his last match, I think he still has a chance to stay in the league. And it must feel good not to like go to 2-6 two, two, or 2-7 two, or anything. So a little bit like face safe. Yeah, exactly. And uh, up next, we're going to have Kibler versus Firepat. That should be pretty exciting.